Well, 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 hello strangers. Long time no see. Let's jump right into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm War again. You're watching Gas Tax. It's been a long, long time since I made a video. And that's because sometimes life gets busy. I'm building a company, another company, and another company. Joined another company. Whew. I need a break and hit the RV. But anyways, let's jump into some things that I like doing more than working and that's working on this RV. So, last time I checked in, I did all of the interior updates on the RV, and then I did a bunch of exterior updates, because then I did a 3,000 mile trip in the camper, but I never filmed the exterior updates. Helicopter billionaire flying over me. Hey, bye. <laughs> See, even the billionaire's gotta work. Anyways, so today I'm gonna to go over all the updates that I did and I kind of view them as must-haves so That's why I did them before my trip and then I'm gonna do some new must-haves. So let's jump right into it Alrighty starting right here in the front. We have the tongue jack cover I had this on my other camper. This keeps your wires all neat. You can put your uh, Electrical plug right here. So it's all good Obviously it has the zip here so you can access these but you don't actually have to unzip to access and it has a little see-through panel for the light So that's all good. I highly recommend that all the links for the stuff are in the description below So be sure you check them out now if you know I used to have some Hitch holder on my other camper. This is an invention that somebody made a couple years ago called the easy store hitch and I wanted to try it out. I knew it existed before I did mine, but what this one does, it also keeps all the weight distribution bars down here. You can lock them in, you lock the hitch here. So I use that, it does work. It is big, but it does work. More reviews to come. Now, I don't know how long or if you followed me for a while, but when I did my crazy adventures, 24,000 miles around America, off-roading in my Micro Mini, I brought along a portable welder and that portable welder needed a car battery uh, It needs two car batteries. So what I did is I purchased a car battery an extra car battery for my Ford X Ford Expedition the exact same one Because if I needed to weld I needed to take both of them out hook up the welder and then I could weld Fortunately, I didn't need it. Unfortunately, that battery is about $300. I purchased it so while I haven't put my solar system on yet, I just used that AGM battery and it is in here. Uh, I had to up upgrade the size of the box because it's a much bigger battery, but that works out perfectly. It maybe triples the amount of battery power compared to the stock battery. Now, moving on to the camera system. On my other camper, I had four cameras, uh, except my cameras were in the middle on both sides, front and rear. So that was more for security because I was going in the middle of nowhere for boondocking. This baby can't really go in the middle of nowhere as much as that one can, but this one's also easier to do. So these cameras are side cameras because this trailer is also a foot wider than the Micro Mini. So this gives me a solid view down the side on both sides and it's just hooked up to the running lights here. Far easier install. I didn't need a camera in front because I found when I had that I never used it so what I did do is I still got four cameras except I hooked two up in the rear okay well gee thanks trees let's see if I can show you on this side all right there we go so one is pointing far back and one is pointing at the hitch so I use this hitch one quite a bit so I can figure out how far I need to back up to especially at campgrounds and that other one is more for traffic so in case I need a slam on brakes or whatever I can see what's coming to hit me from behind so I like that top camera and just moving on down the side here I may as well show you the other side camera and guys I highly recommend this much better setup than my previous setup for towing, but my previous setup wasn't for towing. It was more for the zombies out there. Well, back to the front here. I mean, this really isn't too much. I use the equalizer hitch, same one as my other camper. It worked out perfectly, so I just put it on here. And then I guess one thing I have done in here is, this is the 30 pound tanks, but I put gauges. 
So now I actually have gauges for both propane tanks. Let's move on down the side so I can show you what I've done. Another very important part of RVing is tire pressure, maintaining them, especially because I can't see the tires while I'm driving. So right there is my tire pressure monitoring system that is on all fours as well as the spare. That way I can keep track of what the temperatures are. It's a must have. Some of these newer RVs come with it built in to a point you gotta buy accessory. If not, link down below for this one. Uh, I use it all the time and it works perfectly. Now moving back here to the rear, uh, on my previous camp, but it was fully off grid. I did one camping trip without the off grid capabilities. But other than that, it was always off grid and I never really plugged it in. I never had to carry that 30 amp cable around. I just went straight to an extension cord because it runs off the batteries. The extension cord just charges the batteries. This, since I never got to the solar panels, which I am getting to now, I had that 50 amp cable, which is a pain in the butt to carry around. So let's jump into the back to show you how I store that. So there we go, we have the Mo Rider reel. So this isn't hooked up to anything, it's just a place to store the actual cable. And I tell you what, this is worth every penny, um, so get it. Little buyer tip there, I went to Amazon and I went to used returned or uh, you know returned products. I saved about 50 bucks getting this one because I just purchased a returned one because I knew I wasn't gonna use it at the end of the day, but it's worth every penny. If it's scratched up from being returned, who cares? It's a cable runner, it's gonna get scratched up. Now let's talk about some dirty stuff. All right, so, in my previous camper, I had a macerating system. I got a macerating system 2.0 plan for this baby. And if it works out, I may be able to retire early because I'm selling that. But anyway, so I know these uh, shuttles always get jammed. And luckily, I got this before my trip because it did get jammed. And yeah, this is a must. Just if you sticking with your original dump, get that in case one of your openings get jammed. Mine was the black one. And yeah, it's an inconvenience, but that helps out. Excuse me while I sneeze. Anyways, then from there, I got the magnetic, magnet, magnetic, magnetic uh, caps here. You know, the ones that come on you always lose or fall out. I have lots of hose in there. <laughs> All my hose are in the trunk. But anyways, those are magnetic. They work perfectly because this RV has, you know, black and gray there. And then another gray here. So I need a lot of hose to dump out. So anyways, that is that. I mean, I think I've mentioned this before. Yeah, you know, this one has a little tail wag compared to the Mini. The Mini's wheels are further back. We got a little, a little damage back here, but you know, nothing a little Gorilla Tape can't fix and that's worked out uh, so far so can you believe it i've nearly had this baby for a year anyways that's worked out one day i'll get to fix that but you know it's worked so far so now let's jump onto some projects today because i really need these so i can get back onto the road so firstly i just want to touch base this is my tire mate this is a tire pressure monitoring system solar panel so uh, yeah, I love it. It's worked out. This is the monitor. It's a wireless monitor I keep in the SUV when I'm using it and it works out perfectly. Uh, today we're going to be putting on the flip auto automatic foot uh, jack there so you don't have to wait for this thing to come down. I use that on all my utility trailers. Everything. Love it. So we got to install that. And then here is the main attraction to the show. Let me jump into why these stairs are a game changer. Firstly, before I show you everything about it, these are Torque Lift International and they are the Glow Step Revolution Uprising. So there are many different configurations of RV stairs. So when you go to Torque Lift, make sure you check what RV stairs you have, because some RVs also have two different staircases and get the right ones. So let me show you why I jumped on this, because they actually reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try them. So here are my current stairs. Everyone upgrades to these. Winnebago has them, the solid steps. But I honestly, I, I hate them. I absolutely hate them. <laughs> I like the other stairs before. Firstly, they're super heavy. Uh, thirdly, or secondly, 
uh, they're super heavy. Thirdly, they're super heavy. Um, but let's just, whew, okay. Number one issue. I don't know if it will get solved, but we'll find out. All the dirt comes off and goes inside. You see, you can see chunks of dirt right there. Those ones at least have the ability to bring them up here, shake them, and then put them up. Where these don't, and it really just brings all the dirt in. Now, another issue is I've been to areas, rest stops, whatever, where I have to back up close, and now we can't even get in the RV. Because if we are backing up close to something, look how far these come out. Oh my God, it's heavy. So this comes out four or five, four feet, and yeah, it doesn't work. Another thing is these always have to be adjusted depending on the level of floor. Now, because I like going off the grid, my parking is never level. So that poses another issue. So I know a lot of people buy these stairs. They are sturdier, but you know, I like the floating stairs better because they were less inconvenient and less bulky and everything but they were floating and I ended up bending my other steps in the micro mini. So these are kind of like the solid steps and those fold out steps combined. So anyways, enough talking. Let's get installing all of these accessories and I'll give you my opinion straight away. But as you know me, I will use all the stuff and I'll tell you how it goes further down the road. So let's jump right into it. <laughs> Bada boom. Okay, now, all you gotta do is take this pin out. This comes out. All right, now, you gotta know, these fold up like this. They can fold up like this. Right now, this hole is this way. So it's gonna fold up sideways. My other one, I drilled another hole on to fold up this way. It's more visually appealing. But I'm gonna try this one for a while. Uh, to see how I like it going sideways. Uh, that will also help with this rocking, because right now I know people are worried about the back and forth. So having it sideways should make it more stable. So let's install it. Okay, we got boom, boom, boom. Boom. And that's it guys, simple. Oh, finito. So let me show you how it works. So there we have it guys. We may run into an issue with that, with the weight distribution because it's here so i will find that out first time i hook it up but as you can see it just sucks itself up and then when you let it down the whole point of it is to see it drops at about 10 inches so you don't have to wait for the slow jack to uh, go down so now we go we go and touch the ground and you'll see it goes internally it straightens out and when that hits the bottom there, perfect, all done. And that's a, what, five minute install? Alrighty guys, well, it's been a while since I filmed and my battery died, so I just switched that out. But while I was doing that, you know, I've spent about 15 minutes filming right now. And although in my mind, I hate filming, it actually feels good <laughs> you know i don't have anyone that i know personally that enjoys rvs as much as i do so it's really you guys that talk to me online that make me want to keep making videos because i always even to this day even though i haven't posted in six months is i always get questions and always help people so i appreciate it thanks a lot for tuning in but i need to do this for me and make more videos because i actually find it enjoyable but enough of that let's jump into these babies but i'm gonna assume the first step is to remove these babies hopefully this is the last time i have to lift these all 
All right guys, 10 screws holding this in and one of them was already broken. So even the screws don't like how much these weigh. Oh my God. Good riddance. All right, so when you go to order these, if you find them likable, you have to measure the, obviously the height and then you have to measure the width of the door and really the width of the door, this is very important, is this bracket. And this puppy goes in here. So I'm gonna figure that out and then uh, I'll show you how I did it. Well, my chunky monkey butt didn't figure this out. I gotta get in there. Look at that elevation. Anyways, so Winnebago has this trim around the door. It is nailed in, but here's another side effect of those stairs it damaged the trim anyways i'm gonna pull this trim away i will nail it back on later because let me just show you this puppy mounts right here so then it can the trim can go back on but that's how it mounts back there so let me mount that up remove this trim i won't bore you with that and then we'll get installing so let me show you what i'm working with so that's it that's as simple as it is there are three bolts on each side going to this frame I've done two, just so it doesn't wiggle around while I drill the other ones. And then I will deburr the holes and secure this puppy in. So let's uh, get it done, pretty uh, straightforward. Anyways, so that's as simple as it is. We got three holes, three holes. This puppy will now get bolted in. And those are the trim pieces. Look how crazy it is. It's four little nails sticking out that much that's all that holds this trim on rvs anyways let's bolt this up and put this stairs in well fellows it is all on nice and beefy i think it will rip the door out before it rips out anyways now to remove this piece of shipping wood and that's not to make sure these don't bend during shipping and then it just slots right in here so let's jump into it And there we have it. Alrighty guys, let me show you the new staircase. So, obviously it doesn't go all the way up, but let's see how it works. That's it, much lighter. There is an extra stair in here. So I'm 320 pounds if you haven't noticed. I also have small kids, so the I think that's called a, a dead rise is much easier for them. It's going to be much easier for them. Now I'm going to do some other things and then we're going to actually whoops, show you that that's the good distance out, but we can actually make it closer and tighter to the camper if we want. So let me get that done. Go, you see how those steps on the bottom join up and now we have a much shorter staircase, so it's not in the way coming out. Obviously the rise is bigger, but it is a staircase in those tight situations. Well, there you have it guys. That is the talk lift stairs. These are the glow up revolution uprises. They are glow, oh, there's glow stickers right here, so you can see uh, at night. But another cool benefit, is this little shoe cleaner. So uh, let's pop it in. Right there. So now you can clean your shoes, get all the deep dirt off, and into your camp you go. So guys, what do you think about the new stairs? All right guys, well I wanna thank you for tuning in. I know it's been a while. Sorry, sometimes life gets in the way, but let me show you what's coming next. Right here is all the next projects. So we got the solar power. I've already been testing out the portable solar power on my trips, but now we got a whole thousand amp hours of lithium going in. We got a ton of solar power. For you micro mini followers, there are the revolution steps for the micro mini, so stay tuned. Obviously all of this stuff, but here, what is this retractable hose giddy up? 
Maybe that's my new macerating system.